Uh, the market's a little bit surprised by the numbers you've posted this morning. What lies behind them? Well, um, we actually, uh, in the second quarter, uh, significantly improved the underlying business. Uh, the result is almost three times of what it was in the same quarter last year, and it's driven by very healthy fundamentals in container shipping. Uh, we did use, we did take this quarter uh, uh, impairments in our uh, oil tanker and uh, terminals business, uh, which which drive the the, the reported loss, in, uh, reported result into a loss. But but I think the main story for us is uh, is actually the positive development in our container shipping business. The impairment, though, uh, seven hundred thirty-two million dollars. It's a pretty massive number, Soren. Have you got everything with that? I mean, how's the outlook now um, for the fleet? So, so, so we made an impairment of uh, uh, more than four hundred fifty million dollars in our oil tanker business, and 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 the rest uh, in in our container terminal business. We look at all of our assets every quarter, look at the outlook, and 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 make the make make a write down if we if we think we have to. Uh, and then it's basically uh, it's based on the outlook for the for, for, for the business. So so uh, so I, I think it, it reflects the reality we are in. You have the the three hundred million, possibly up to three hundred million dollars in losses due to the cyber attack. That wasn't in the quarter you reported, but in this current quarter, are you comfortable um, that that's really the upper end, the upper range of this number? And will that? hold you back from being able to report a profit in the third quarter? Uh, well, no. Uh, we, we believe that, first of all, we believe that the two to three hundred million dollar range is, 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 is what, what, the, what this will end up uh, costing us in terms of lost business and, and uh, extra cost for, for rebuilding and, 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 and so on. Uh, we're still maintaining our guidance uh, for the company and for particularly for the container shipping uh, business of an improvement of uh, more than a billion dollars compared to the uh, same period uh, last year. So, so, so that I guess is in a way uh, is a testament to the relatively strong fundamentals we now have in, 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 in container shipping. Can I just pick up on those those strong fundamentals that you talk about? How much of that is down to the consolidation that we saw in this industry in the last year? And do you expect those fundamentals to improve further going into next year with more consolidation? Well, first of all, I believe that uh, what is helping us right now is, is, uh, is uh, that the global economy, frankly, is, is doing quite well. We are finally out of the, uh, the grasp of the financial crisis. You see global GDP edging up to 3%. And, and for container shipping, that has meant a strong rebound in demand. More than six, around six percent uh, so far this year, and and you know so the business is growing uh, twice with twice the speed of, of global GDP. At the same time, if you look on the supply side, we have we have a, a relatively benign uh, capacity additions, meaning that demand is actually outgrowing supply and has been grow, outgrowing supply since the since the third quarter last year. So I think that's the fundamental. That is that driving prices higher. Uh, our our freight rates were up 22 percent uh, in the second quarter year and year. So and and I'm I'm looking at, at relatively positive fundamentals. The, actually, the best since 2010. Yeah. Uh, for the for the next few years. Okay. So that the, so the backdrop is is kind of fundamentally driven because of global trade. Do yes. you think? I, can I just ask you a, a consolidation question then from a different angle? Do you think that that would encourage further consolidation, or do you think that that would make consolidation less likely because the pressure to do so would be lesser in the year ahead? Um, I mean, as you point out yourself, uh, the, the, the sector has consolidated quite uh, quite a lot in the last uh, three years. Uh, I think many, including myself, have been surprised with the number of transactions and the speed. And, and we have gone from uh, an, an industry that used to have 20 carriers that could call themselves global to now uh, 11. Uh, I, I'm, I would very much expect that consolidation will continue uh, and uh, that we, we will see a situation within the next uh, decade of, 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 of maybe even half, half of the number that what we have today. Uh, simply because that the, 
the economies of scale in, in the industry is such that uh, that that uh, you know the bigger companies are more competitive from a from a cost point of view and also from a, a service point of view. So so I see consolidation continuing. Clearly, uh, clearly, you know, the, the the incentive to consolidate from a financial point of view becomes uh, smaller if if everybody's making a lot of money. Uh, but and that may delay things. But but in my mind, it's inevitable that we will see more consolidation. Will Maersk line, Soren, will Maersk line participate in that consolidation? Well, we have uh, we have uh, one transaction we still have to close, which was our acquisition of Hamburg Süd, which we announced in December last year. We expect to close it uh, in the fourth quarter of this year. And uh, we need to integrate that and, 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 and deliver on our business case before we can think about doing uh, anything more in, uh, in this sector. Soren, can I ask you a, a slightly strange question? Um, the UK is trying to figure out whether or not it can have a frictionless border with the rest of the EU if it were, if it were outside the customs union. You're a guy that ships stuff around the world. You ship stuff out of the UK, you ship it into Europe, you do it vice versa. How much technology would be required? How much spending would be required to make that happen? And do you think it is a viable option? Oh, uh, that is uh, probably a question that is a little bit outside my uh, area of uh, expertise. I mean, we we clearly, uh, uh, from an international shipping point of view, uh, you know, we are used to dealing with, with, with all of the countries basically in the world. We are in, present in more than 120 countries. So whatever the UK is doing in terms of how to run its customs and so on, I'm sure that we will be able to adapt to that. Uh, I'm also sure that the UK, no matter what, will, will, will uh, develop solutions that are digital and, and based on IT. And therefore, I think, I think it will be possible to, to, to handle this in a very smooth way.